This video is for Lesson 25-2 about inscribed angles. Learning goals are to describe the relationship among inscribed angles, central angles, and arcs, and to use inscribed angles to solve problems. In the last lesson, we looked at central angles. Central angles have their vertex at the center of the circle, and the sides of the angle intercept the circle, creating an arc. Our theorem was that the measure of the central angle is equal to the measure of the intercepted arc. For example, if this was 30 degrees, then the minor arc is 30 degrees. Let's talk about another kind of angle that can be created in a circle. This time we're going to put the vertex of the angle on the circle, not at the center of the circle. And we'll have the sides of the angle be chords in the circle. So this side touches at a dot here, and let's draw another one touching, let's say, here. The sides of that inscribed angle create a minor arc. Now what's the relationship of the size of this arc to the degree measurement of the central angle? I want you to notice that this arc is at least the same size as this one, maybe even a little bit longer looking, but this angle looks skinnier than the central angle. The relationship between an inscribed angle and its arc is that the inscribed angle is half of the measure of the arc. For example, if this arc was 40 degrees, the inscribed angle is only 20 degrees. We can write that as a theorem. I'll pause the video for you to record this theorem in your notes. The measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. An inscribed angle has a vertex on the circle. Don't confuse that with a central angle whose vertex is at the center of a circle. The inscribed angle is half of its intercepted arc, but a central angle is congruent to its intercepted arc. Let's go to problem eight and do some samples. Given circle C has a diameter, segment AR, and the measure of angle HCA is 50 degrees. Let's label angle HCA as 50 degrees. I'm gonna identify angle HCA as a central angle. Now question A, what's the measure of angle HIA? So we go from H to I, to A, that's an inscribed angle because its vertex point I is on the circle. Here's how we can find that. Because angle HCA is a central angle, its intercepted arc is 50 degrees. So this curved part of the circle out here is 50 degrees. Now look at angle HIA, our inscribed angle. It intercepts that same arc. The sides of angle HIA extend and touch the circle at point H and at point A. It makes that same arc. If that is 50 degrees, how much is this angle here? It's not 50 because it's an inscribed angle. How much is it? It's 25 degrees using our theorem from today. Now question B, what's the measure of angle HCR? Well, we need to find that. So HCR is this obtuse angle. It's located along this diameter. These two angles are going to add to 180. So this is 130 degrees. Now question C, what's the measure of angle HIR? We need to find that. H to I to R. We're looking for this angle here. This is an inscribed angle it's going to be half of its intercepted arc. So let's go out to the circle and find its intercepted arc. How much is this curved portion of the circle? Well, from A wrapping all the way to R is 180 degrees. From A to H is 50. That means that this much is 130. Our angle we're looking for is half of the 130. That's 65 degrees. Notice I'm finding relationships by looking for arcs, inscribed angles, and central angles. 
One more to go. The measure of angle AIR. We need to find that. AIR starts at A, goes to the I, turns a corner, and goes to the R. We're looking for this angle here. This is an inscribed angle because point I is on the circle. The sides of that angle touch at point A and at point R. So the arc that's intercepted by that angle is a full half of a circle, or 180. So if the arc is 180, how much is angle I? It's 90 degrees. There is a 90 degree angle box in that angle right there. Let's jump ahead all the way to the check your understanding questions. Number 16, if an inscribed angle in a circle intercepts a semicircle, what's true about the measure of the angle? We were just looking at that situation. Let's say that there is a circle and a diameter cuts that circle in half, creating two semicircles. Now it mentions an inscribed angle intercepts the semicircle. So somewhere on the circle there is a dot and one side of an angle goes and touches here. The other side of the angle goes and touches here. What is this angle in degrees? It's 90 degrees. Question 17. Refer to this drawing where quadrilateral ABCD is inscribed in circle O. We're told that segment AC is a diameter of the circle. So if we connect A to C, it will go through the center dot. We're told that it's a diameter. We're also told that the measure of angle DAB is 122 degrees. Let's label that from D to A to B, 122 degrees. Find the measure of angle BCD. BCD is this one over here. How many degrees is that angle? These two angles are the opposite angles in a quadrilateral. They are going to be supplementary. They're going to add to 180. So 122 plus 58 degrees, whoops, down here, right? Question A, 58 degrees adds to 180. Question B, what are the measures of angle ADC and angle ABC? So angle ADC is this one, and angle ABC is this one up here. What are those measures? Both of these measure 90 degrees. The reason is those are inscribed angles, and when you trace the sides of the angle, it touches at A and it touches at C. It intercepts half of a circle. Half of 180 is 90 degrees. That was today's theorem, that an inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. To summarize, in this lesson we discussed another kind of angle drawn in a circle called an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle has its vertex on the circle, not in the center of the circle. So this drawing right here is an example of an inscribed angle. The vertex is here on the circle. An inscribed angle is connected to the arc that it intercepts. If an inscribed angle is, for example, 42 degrees, the arc that it intercepts is 84 degrees. 